Welcome to this video. Um, last time we finished up with skip and fill and align directives. Uh, there is a couple more directives I would like to talk about. Uh, one of them is the if else uh, directives. And the second one is the macro. And I wanted to go over the if else statement because I'm going to give an example about using macros. And uh, within that example, I'm going to use if else. So I wanted to cover those first before I actually go into the macro. So there is a very simple um, uh, uh, directive that's called the if directive. So as the name suggests, if and uh, something is true, the code that follows the if statement will get executed. Otherwise, as you guys may know, you have the else and whatever follows the else uh, will be executed. And you end both of them with the dot end if. So the way you do this in assembly is basically you have the dot if, then dot else, and then end if. For uh, simplicity, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write the value one here. So basically, if something is true, well, in this case, one is true because it's not zero, um, then whatever comes after will be executed. So in this case, I'm just going to move a value into register R1. Don't worry, we'll have plenty of videos about using uh, or move, writing instructions in assembly. Um, otherwise, uh, here I'm going to move the value, um, let's say, 6 into R1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to branch to some label called end. And in both cases, I'm going to just uh, branch to end. And here I'm going to have a label called end, which is going to branch back to itself. Um, oops, branch back to itself. So again, don't worry too much about the instructions. We'll have uh, more videos that specifically cover the instructions, um, but I'll explain these briefly. Move, we'll move value into our, <coughs> into our registers, and the B instruction will unconditionally branch to a label. In this case, either direction I'm going with this code, I'm going to branch to a label called end, and then at that label, I'm branching back to the label itself. So I'm intentionally putting the program in a endless loop. So let's go ahead and uh, compile and download this to the board and see what happens. Okay, if I step through the program, um, obviously this statement was actually uh, executed inside the if statement because if one, basically if something is true and one is true, so I'm executing this first instruction, which happens to be move R or move five into R1. So here's five moved into R1, register R1. And then afterwards, I'm, uh, the program is going to branch into that label, which is this one right here, end. And then this is going to branch back to itself. So if you continue executing, you'll see that it's branching back to itself. So let's see what happens if I change this one into zero. It should not really execute this move. It rather should execute this one instead. Okay, let's step through the program. So you notice that it did not go through this uh, instruction. It moved to this one. So it's moving the value of six into R1. Here is six and R1. Now, uh, don't worry too much about, you know, why you know, this seems extremely simple. Like why would I put a zero or one here? Um, later on, I will show you how some of these parameters will be evaluated. You might have some value here, like you know, like if x equals to one of to some extent, um, and if that's true, then the instructions within the if, st if statement will be executed. Otherwise, the instructions within the else statement will be executed. Um, again, it's pretty straightforward. So let's move on to uh, the macros. And hopefully once you see how the macros are working and how we need to use an if else statement in a macro to execute some instructions, this will make a little bit more sense to you. Okay, so let's uh, write a macro together and I'll show you uh, the directive for that. So macros are short programs and you can write them and call them later when you execute your program. Uh, they don't execute automatically. They only execute if they get called. Um, so the way to define a macro in the assembly language uh, is using the macro um, 
using the macro directive, so dot macro, and then you give the macro a name. Uh, for the example, we can give this macro the the uh, the name check, and then you can give it multiple parameters. So in this case, I'm going to pass one parameter to this macro. You can have multiple parameters like parameter two, parameter three, and so on. So I'm going to write this macro with one parameter, and the uh, you end the macro with the dot end m directive. So now whatever is inside that block is simply uh, the instructions for or that, that belong to the macro. So let's say I want to call this macro to check whether a value that I have in my register is zero or not. So that's why I called it a check. So let's say, uh, so let's see how, how we do that. So within the macro, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the if directive again, and we went over this and I need to evaluate the parameter. And the way you do that is you put the uh, backslash uh, and then the name of that parameter, in this case, it's P1. And I want to check whether or not this is equal to zero. So that's how you check against zero. And if it is indeed zero, I want to move, I want to move zero into my R1 register. Otherwise, I will move um, one into R1. Okay. And then we need to end this if statement. So dot end if, and then we need to end the macro. We use dot end M. Actually, I already have that there. And um, so we need to call the macro and I need to pass a parameter to, I need to pass a parameter to it. So let's do that here. Um, let's, uh, say, for example, I'm moving some value into register R2. Uh, let's move the value 6. And then I'm going to call the macro. I simply just type the name of that macro. In this case, it's check. And then I pass the parameter value. In this case, I want to pass R2 into that uh, macro. So check and R2. So essentially what I'm doing here is that I'm defining this macro but I'm not going to execute it. This code does not execute unless it gets called. Think of it as a, a function that you type in a high level programming language that does not get executed unless you call it. So the first instruction that you will see, let's, let's actually compile and download and I'll, I'll show you what um, this does. So um, now the code is downloaded to memory. Uh, I don't want to spoil it to you, but uh, I feel like I need to show you a few things. So in this case, uh, this is the first instruction that will be executed. And the second one is calling the macro. And the assembler actually knows beforehand since this is uh, the, the value that we moved. So how does this work? I'm moving six into R2 and then I'm calling the macro and I'm passing the register as a parameter. And then I come here to my macro. The macro is going to check the value that is in that register and it will determine whether or not that value is equal to zero. If it is a zero, then zero will be, the macro will move zero into R1. Otherwise it will move one into R1. So if I look, if I look at the, my, uh, my disassembly, I see that the, uh, the assembler already knew because since this value is hard coded, they, uh, the assembler already knew that the macro will re-evaluate itself into actually this simple instruction right here, which is moving one into R1. So let me repeat, uh, this is my first instruction. And then I call a macro and I pass the register R2 as a parameter to that macro. And within the macro now, what happened is uh, the macro is gonna come to this first uh, directive, is going to evaluate to see whether or not the value of R1, or I'm sorry, of R2, that parameter P1 is equal to zero. It is not because we already put six in it. So it's going to come here and it's going to move one into R1. Since the assembler knows that beforehand when the program was assembled, it's going to you know basically optimize it and just replace this function call or this macro call with simply the instruction of move R1 hashtag one. So let's uh, run this uh, program step by step. So the first one was moving six into R2. Here is my six stored them to R2. And then when I call the macro, if I step through it, it's gonna move one into R1 because 
it executed this instruction. Why? Because the value in that of oops, the value of that parameter is not equal to zero. Okay. Okay. This is it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and um, we will go over some more examples in the next uh, video. Um, I'll see you soon.